funding for Wishbone provided by annual financial support from PBS viewers like you. What's the story, Wishbone? What's this your dream? Hey, Squirt. Don't give me any ideas, Demont. You and your little gang going to the dance on Saturday? Why do you care, Demont? Oh, I want to know where to set up the uh, losers only section. <laughs> you got to know how to write to make a sign, pal. What do you mean, losers only? Well, you're not going with anyone, are you? Well, we're going together. That's what I thought. All the cool people have dates. You're cool? Of course, when you dress like that. What can you expect? Hey, Damon, think fast. Ooh. Keep your dog off me. Oh, didn't you know that paw print pants are the latest fad? I'm such a trendsetter. Oh, don't go away mad, Damon. Just go away. The secret word for today is snack time. Damon just wants to sew off. Forget about him. Hey, let's talk about this in the kitchen. What's wrong with how I dress? He thinks that his friends are the only cool people. Yeah, mean old Demont. Let's have a snack and forget about it. How are we going to have any fun at the dance with him around? All those people staring at you. Oh, it makes me nervous. Yeah, I mean, everybody just stands around. People get so weird. You guys have got to calm down. We won't be weird. Or we could talk about the party and eat later. Speaking of party, I wonder if Joe got that menu I was looking for. Hmm. Being nervous about parties happens to a lot of people. Read Jane Austen. Back in 1813, she wrote a juicy, meaty book about people and parties, pride and prejudice. In a small English town, one of my favorite characters, Elizabeth Bennet, and her sister are invited to the ball. Elizabeth, what about these flowers for the bud vase? Oh, they're beautiful. We'd better go in. Oh, oh. <laughs> Very good. Come along. These two are comfortable anywhere. around. I have wonderful news. What is it, Mama? A young man from London has rented Netherfield. Netherfield? He must be ever so rich. Indeed. And we are all invited to a ball. I dare say he will marry one of you. Oh, oh. Mama, for shame. Oh, quiet, Lizzie. Jane, you must wear your new dress. How we dress will not matter in the light of how we behave. Oh, Lizzie, whatever <laughs> do you mean? <laughs> Mr. Bingley and his snobby sister rented a huge house. And they had a huge party to meet the neighbors. Mr. Bingley, this is my eldest, Jane. <laughs> and these are my other girls. I welcome you all. Punch.
This is my sister, Miss Bingley. And my good friend, Mr. Darcy. Darcy. Mr. Bingley's rich and incredibly handsome friend, Mr. Darcy, is nervous at parties. So nervous, he seems rude. Ugh, meeting all of these new people gives me a headache. Jane has, without exception, the sweetest temper I have ever met. Would you care to dance? Miss Bennett? I would be honored, Mr. Bingley. <laughs> what a lovely dress. Thank you. I had one very like it in London. <laughs> Three or four seasons ago. Oh, um, hello again. Mr. Darcy, would you be a darling and escort me to the punch bowl? Uh, yes, of course. Excuse us, Miss Becker. Uh, Bennett. Sorry. How very rude. Good evening. Oh. Oh. These country balls are horrid. Nothing like London. Come, Darcy. I must have you dance. Bingley, you know I don't like dancing with strangers. Besides, I'm a London man. I'm not interested in country girls. You are too fastidious. I've never met so many pleasant girls in all my life. Well, that's true. Miss Bennet is very pretty. What about her sister, Miss <laughs> Elizabeth? She's delightful and very clever. And why should I dance with her when nobody else will? I certainly do not mean to beg him to be my partner. Mom, I think I need new shoes. What? We just bought those a month ago. Well, these hurt my feet. Uh, come here, let me see. Up here. Well, they seem to fit all right. Well, these would fit a lot better. Joe, if you need new shoes, fine. But <laughs> these are way too expensive. Well, you could take it out of my allowance. Your allowance? How will you buy my chew toys or my bite-sized mini fun bones? That's not the point, honey. But nobody wears this kind of shoe anymore. Besides, this has Joe, the part... Joe, you don't have to have expensive clothes to make people like you. I don't even have clothes. And think how popular I am. Okay, library, here we come. Hey, let's make it a contest. Last one to the bench has to rub my tummy anytime I want forever. Sam, what do you think of these shoes? They're fine, Joe. But listen, I heard from Robin's friend Tia that DeMont found out that David's going to the dance with Amanda. No way! Mm, I'm tired of this dance. Nobody wants to play anymore. Well, that's what I heard. What'd you hear about you and Amanda? What do you mean? Did you ask Amanda to the dance? No! Who said that? Everyone. Well, I heard that you asked Nathaniel Bobolewski. What? Uh-oh, it's getting ugly. That's what rumors usually do. Caroline Bingley thought the Bennets weren't good enough, and she wanted Mr. Darcy all for herself. So, she spread rumors about Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth. I have heard on good authority, Mr. Darcy, that you have developed a preference for Miss Elizabeth Bennet. Well, that's impossible. I hardly know her. <laughs> Well, I must order my dresses. Pray tell, when is the wedding to be? Look, she's nice, but I can't marry a poor girl, so, you know, enough already? <laughs> hmm. Mary, Elizabeth and I. That's crazy, isn't it?
Meanwhile, Elizabeth was so mad at Mr. Darcy's rudeness that she became prejudiced against him. Then she met George Wickham. I believe you are acquainted with Mr. Darcy. As much as I ever wish to be. Oh, what I could say. Darcy's behavior towards myself has been scandalous. Whatever do you mean? His dear father was my godfather. He loved me and meant to provide for me after his death. Darcy ignored my inheritance. He cheated me. Good heavens! But how can this be? Darcy claimed that I did not deserve it. He thought I was extravagant. Now I am poor. This news is shocking. It has to be made public. Not by me. I've never told anyone. You've had him long enough, Lizzie. <laughs> When Darcy and Elizabeth meet at the next ball, neither one knows what to believe. Darcy, I insist you dance with us. Bingley, you know I've got four left feet. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Miss Eliza, I hear that you've been talking with George Wickham. I would take care if I were you. The poor are great liars, you know. I know that money does not buy good character. <laughs> it is a lovely ball. Don't you agree? Uh, yes, quite. It is your turn to speak, Mr. Darcy. I talk to the dance. And you ought to make some kind of remark about the size of the room. Or the number of couples. Your sister will dance with just about anybody, huh? I guess you prefer to criticize everyone. I have heard all about you. Well, don't believe everything you hear. I can't believe you, David. Joe! This is getting out of hand. I thought you were my friend. Sam? <laughs> what about you? You were spreading rumors about me to Joe. David? I was just telling him what I heard. <laughs> right. Without asking me first? <laughs> Guys, come on. Oh, like I need some permission to talk? Well, obviously no one can stop you from talking. So why don't you get a radio station and tell the whole world? Hey. I mean, I can't believe Hey. You. Guys. <laughs> Time out. Oh, Hello. <laughs> Guys. Guys. They're barking louder than I am. I like that one. That's a good color. This one smells funny. His clothes are lame. Well, how about one of these? Lame. Well, relax. You still have two days before the party. Boy, you can just feel the tension in here, can't you? Why don't you tell me what happened this afternoon? Mom, you wouldn't believe it. I'd never seen Sam and David so mad before. They were just screaming at each other. Woo! Think how I feel. My ears are still ringing. Ugh. Well, that sounds pretty bad. What do you think we should do? I don't know. I'm mad, too. Thanks to them, what's the point of going to the dance? I agree. Let's skip it. Hey, who wants to play sock? Well, you know... If you let this go on too long, it's just going to be harder to fix. Yeah. I just don't want to choose sides. It's like our whole friendship is caught in the middle. Boy, oh boy. You said a mouthful, pal. You know, being caught in the middle is what happened to Bingley and Jane in Pride and Prejudice. Miss Bennet has such happy, easy manners, don't you think, Caroline? She smiles too much. Oh... And what of her mother and sisters? They have no fortune. That does not make her one jot less agreeable. <sighs> Bingley, as unagreeable as it may be, it's time to give you the facts of life. We are rich society people. <laughs> True enough. <laughs> the Bennets are not. If you like Miss Bennet, we have a problem. She just, well, won't fit in our world. But she is so... 
agreeable. I know. Actually, I miss Elizabeth's not bad. <laughs> I heard her say the funniest thing just the other day. Well, She's... since we agreed the Binnets are entirely unsuitable, I suggest that we return to London before things go any further. She's right. If I stay any longer, I might fall in love. Jane! Jane, come to me at once! Mama, what has happened? Dreadful news. Mr Bingley and all his guests have gone back to London. When will they return? Perhaps never. Oh, Jane, how could Mr Bingley leave? I know you would have got him if you could. <laughs> My only consolation is that you may die of a broken heart. And then he will be sorry. He loves you. I'm sure of it. This has to be the work of Miss Bingley and Mr Darcy. Oh. Ooh, I got it! I got it! Um, ah, boy, sometimes I really wish I had thumbs. Amanda, Nathaniel, wait up. Now we'll get to the bottom of these rumors and back to normal. Do you two have dates for the social tomorrow? No, and I especially didn't ask David. I don't know who started that. Uh, excuse me? What's wrong with David? I heard that Samantha really wanted a date, but that she couldn't get one. Then Sam didn't ask you? No, I heard that you asked her out. What? I don't know who to believe. So Nathaniel thinks I'm desperate? Well, not exactly. That was just what he heard. Well, that's stupid. Yeah, I mean, we were all going together. But if you really want to date, I'll go with you. Oh, so you think I'm desperate too? Look, Joe, I don't want a date, okay? I'd take that as a no. Yep, a definite no. So much for trying to help. Mm, that communication thing is still not working quite right, Joe. It happens all the time. Mr. Darcy met Elizabeth again when she visited friends at Hunsford in the countryside. After spending more time together, Elizabeth thought she liked him, just a little bit. Darcy knew he should come clean about breaking up Jane and Bingley, but he never got around to it. Instead, he fell in love. I got it. No, I don't. I'll say it. No, I won't. I'll do it. No, I can't. You asked to speak with me, Mr. Darcy? Um, yes if you don't mind. As you wish. <clears throat> uh, Miss... Elizabeth. Uh, it must be said. I've struggled in vain. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. <sighs> I... I don't know what I... I know, I know. It's ridiculous for me, a Darcy, to love you, who have no fortune at all. Oh, but I do, I do. Marry me. In this situation, I believe it is customary in polite society to express my obligation to you for the honor of your proposal. Kind of makes you feel like Cinderella, doesn't it? You don't have if to... If I could feel gratitude, I would now thank you, but I cannot. Pardon? I have never desired your good opinion. I can only hope that my inferiority will assist you in recovering from my refusal. Good day, Mr. Darcy. Wait, no! It just came out wrong! Oh, great. Elizabeth, please, let me explain. Even had I loved you, do you think I could accept the man who has ruined the happiness of Jane, my most beloved sister? Um, I can explain about that, too. Um, you thought even Jane was not good enough. You cannot deny that you are the reason Mr. Bingley went away. Well, technically, but... You... Your true, cruel character was revealed to me by Mr. Wickham. Wickham? That tomcat? You don't believe his story. I believed you to be a gentleman. That was my mistake. I beg you to leave. Oh, boy. Elizabeth, 
please, if I can just have a few minutes. I know I sound really rude and arrogant, but I'm really just the nicest guy. Is this the part where you shut the door in my face? Yes, it is. I am most seriously confused. Oh, so I see you're taking her side. No, I wasn't. I was just coming over to check no, and... No, I just wanted to... Forget it. Wait, Sam, wait. David, wait up! I give up. Tonight's gonna be the... Beach party antisocial. Hmm. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yet? This has got to end. Come here. Come here. Look, I'm tired of this fight. Well, who started it? Oh, are you saying I did? Guys, you're acting crazy. You're letting those stupid rumors break us up. You tell them, Joe. You're both wrong and too proud to admit it. Now, on the count of three, I want you both to apologize, okay? Wait, what about you? What did I do? You forgot to tuck me in last night. I don't know, but you did something. Let's all apologize. Okay. One, two, three. Sorry. Sorry. <sighs> I accept. Mr. Darcy apologized, too to make his wrongs right. He brought Bingley back to see Jane. Elizabeth found out that George Wickham was a big liar, especially about Mr. Darcy. She apologized and realized that Darcy was pretty nice. <clears throat> Elizabeth, I've never told anybody this before, but I love digging around in the dirt. How's that? Thank you. What you did for Jane makes me very happy. Oh, but when I think of how I insulted you... We will not quarrel for the greater share of blame. Both of us have behaved improperly. And we have both, I hope, improved in civility. I would be honored if you would give me your hand in marriage. Miss Elizabeth? Yes, Mr. Darcy? Do you believe that we could learn more about each other in the future? Yes, I believe we could. Lizzie, Mr. Bingley and I are to be married. <gasps> <laughs> Congratulations, old boy. This is so exciting. Everyone's getting kisses. Except me. <laughs> Joe, listen to this. Yeah, we figured it all out. What do you mean? All the rumors? Okay, go back to one source. Yep. Demont Jones. Demont? Oh, really? Wishbone! I've missed out on a lot of snack time because of you, pal. Wishbone! Uh, Wishbone, sit! You're lucky I got all A's in obedience school, buddy. Stay. Keep your dog away from me. Sorry, Dumont. No problem. Where's your date? Yeah, Mr. Cool. Uh, what was her name? She couldn't make it. She had a cold. And I didn't want to get sick. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. 
Well, have a good time. Great shirt. Thanks. I think your shirt's on backwards. <laughs> Joe, did you know that your shirt's on inside out? <laughs> Sarah, everybody on the floor! She's liable to go off again! Oh, that is gross. You're disgusting. Ew, it came out of her nose. Ah, uh, great. I've got pink fur. This is nice. <laughs> And so our saga ends. What have we learned? Never judge a book by its cover. Don't worry about how other people see you. Get the facts straight from the horse's mouth. Mm, yeah, like horses are so great. Anyway, why ask me? I'm just a dog. Lots of action in Jane Austen's book Pride and Prejudice takes place on the dance floor. If you had two left paws back then, you were in big trouble, because they did some pretty fancy footwork. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, a choreographer is the person who plans out the dances and then teaches them to the dancers. It's a job that requires familiarity with music and rhythm, as well as movement and style. A choreographer also needs to be a good communicator. This one looked like so much fun, I had to try it myself. Hey, I don't mean to make the other dancers look bad, but it's not my fault they've only got two feet. See you on the dance floor. Keep in step with me and Jane Austen. Visit your local library. sniff out Wishbone books and other great things to read at your local library. Funding for Wishbone provided by annual financial support from PBS viewers like you. Go! What? You say you want something to do? Well, try this. Gather up your humans, put them in the car, and hightail it to your local library! <laughs> There's something for the whole family at the library. Adventure, comedy, mystery. So hightail it to your local library. It's a family thing. Only if you want a book on the top shelf, bring someone tall. Gonna get some assistance here. This stuff got really popular in my school. My teacher had to ban it from my classroom. Pretty much anything you can think of, I can probably make out of duct tape. I've made a lot of stuff. I've made bow ties. Top hat, this mug, very useful. I've even made a mask, but I don't know what happened to that. If you can think it up, I can make it. My name's Luke, and well, I like duct tape. Go! Why is this dog so happy? It could be his show Fetch with Ruff Ruffman on PBS Kids Go! Maybe it's that he sends real kids on heart-stopping, brain-bending challenges. Yes! Or maybe he's just got fleas. Fetch with Ruff Ruff Men on PBS Kids Go! I get all itchy when I get excited. Come ride the rails to a great adventure with Thomas and friends. Explore the island of Sodor with Rosie, Rocky, and the other very useful engines. Making tracks to great destinations with Thomas and friends. Right here on PBS Kids. Sunday mornings at 9.30 on WHYY Kids. Calling all super readers. Want to go on a reading adventure? Then get ready for Super Y. Join the super readers. Alpha Pig, Wonder Red, Princess Presto, and Super Y. The fun starts when the reading begins. It's Super Y. Weekday mornings at 9 on WHYY Kids. Who's there? It's the Teletubbies. Lala, Tinky Winky, Poe, Dipsy. Lala running. Teletubbies everywhere. Big hug. The Teletubbies, only on PBS Kids.